Okay, so I've played up through the to through the winter turn of seventeen fifty seven. So I've finished the winter turn, getting ready to start the um, what is it? We're getting ready to start February of the next year, where um, Great Britain will go into the Chitful Cup, and that'll be the last um, army chit to be added to the cup. Just an overview of where we are. So I didn't remove, but so what we've got going on is a siege down here. Basically, the uh, the Prussians moved south in this in this year and um, pushed back the Austrians up here. The there was some I tried to take these Prussian forces to kick out the Swedes, but I <laughs> couldn't do it. So it's kind of stagnating in here with the, with the Prussian army. Now, what did happen with France is they were able to move their armies forward, so they are now. There's actually a battle in Hanover, which kind of resulted in nothing happening, which was interesting. They've got a, a, a large army that moved toward Leipzig and another large army that moved up here. Uh, Wessel. And the Russians, their chits in the cup, but they haven't pulled it yet. It's been really interesting. I've been pulling a lot of Austrian and Prussian army chits. And the France was the only exception, but yeah... The other chits just aren't coming out of the cup before I hit that end turn. So uh, just a quick overview. That's where we are right now. And I will start uh, 1758. All right. So I reached the end of 1758. Uh, I went through the winter phase. So we were completely done with that year. We're getting ready to start 1759. So the way things stand now, a lot of stagnation still... Um, haven't made a lot of headway either down here or over here. It's been back and forth, back and forth. A lot of fighting going on right here in the center of this cluster. It's been crazy. The French have managed to move a lot further up on the uh, on Great Britain, and uh, winter was kind of devastating to the French this turn. So it's going to be interesting to see. They took a lot of hits here. It also kind of hit the uh, Austrian alliance down here. So winter can be deadly. The other thing to note is Russia is out now, and they're moving their armies, their stacks down. So that's things are going to look are looking pretty bad for the Prussian alliance. So that's where we are at the end of 1758. All right, just a quick update. I am approaching the end of 1759, but the thing to look at here is the. Prussian alliance resource marker is on nine, and so if Berlin falls, they'll lose. And so what I'm looking at now is it is the Austrians' turn to go. They have three action points, and I'm thinking about, I think what's going to happen is I'm going to move this stack. It would be one to here, two to go down to Berlin, and then the third stack would come from here into Berlin. So there's going to be two big stacks. Going into Berlin, and uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I, I'm going to keep recording. Let's just watch it together. I don't have the battle board in a place where you can well, see. Can I get the battle board on where you can actually see here? I think it's close enough. Let's try it. Let's try it. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend two action points. We'll, we'll get this stack to Berlin, and then I want to get... The units are here. Like there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Let's just take these seven then. You know what? I guess I could take this guy too because it would be it would absorb a hit. So why not? So we're gonna take stacks and then Caesars that have little sticky things on the bottom. So okay, and then for one action point. These guys move into Berlin. So that's going to use up all their action points. Both of these stacks converge on Berlin. We'll bring out units from Berlin. I'll show that there is a battle for Berlin. This could be the battle to end all battles. Let's see.
Okay, that's you can only control up to four person with split the there. Down here. It's around. And then so we have sure can up four. This linger can order up to four. Yep. Was these guys is depleted. So this guy, this linger can order up to eight. Enough here. Eight, and we have two left. That are leaderless. Well, three if you count the depleted guy. But he will not get to fire. Uh, depleted guy off to the side. They're split. Probably can't see the depleted. No, you can see the depleted guy. Just barely, though. Okay, so quick look at the tactical cards here for the Austrian Alliance. So they are the ones that are phasing here, so they can't use that card. Can't use they really you know they don't have any cards. They really don't have anything they can use. That kind of sucks for them. Unless the army tries to retreat out of Merlin, but that would be suicide. And then the Prussian Alliance, they they don't have anything they can use either. Yikes. No tactics cards in this one. So drop the dice from the dice tower. And so the attackers here, and this is not, Berlin is a resource space, but it is not a fort, so it's strictly field battle here. Yeah, they get to fire first, though. The defender fires first, so I'm going to get four dice, and they need to get a, let's see, what are we looking for? Six, so they need to get, well, it's a plus three, so they need to get three or higher. That should be easy to do, right? <laughs> Three or higher, and they get one, four, five, and six. So that's three hits. So I think what the Austrian player wants to do with those three hits, they'll take this depleted unit, because like I said, that's going to soak a hit, really. And then he'll just take got two more hits to take. He'll just lose a unit. Because we want everyone to fire here. This, this could be it. So now we go back to. The attacker side. So these four, I'll get four d6, and it is they're looking for four, five, or six to hit. One hit, so that's one depleted Russian unit. And then the line behind them gets to fire, and actually he there's no bonus. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have we have let's see, what do I have here? I've got Eight, right? I've been using eight all along, and I got the big blue one, so that's nine. So let's just throw all of these. They're firing, and they need uh, a six to hit. And that, well, there's some double stacking going on, so I'm going to reroll this one. And miss. <laughs> I'm going to bring this over so you can see it. Probably should have done it anyway, because I think, yeah, you can actually see the dice tower. You don't need the fort. So that's a complete miss. Dice. Russians might hang on here after all. So they get to return fire. Now they can retreat, but they're not going to do that. So these four, they're looking for three or higher. They do get one hit. So they hit off an Austrian unit. And then the other three now get to fire, but they've got to get you gotta get a six. <laughs> what is that? A one, a two, and a two. They don't get any sixes. And then we're back to the Austrian side. And the front line is looking for four or higher. That looks like two hits. Two more hits. On the Russian.
and we go back to Russian side. So we're still, we still have these four that are looking for three or higher. Oh my God. <laughs> all ones. That is terrible. Three or higher is all they got to roll. They roll four ones. Oh, this is not good. And then the one guy over here, he, he needs a six. And he misses. Wow. All right. Back to that front line, looking for four, five, or six. Oh my god, they just they hit every single one. That's four hits. Two, three, four. Yikes. That leaves one leader unit that can fire back. And retreat. They can retreat. He's gonna stand his ground. He has to. It's Berlin, right? So he needs a three or higher to hit, and he does. So he hits. He wounds one of these guys. Depletes one of these guys. And now we go back to that front line with its four. Need a four, five, or six. Um, it was a five, and it turned into a six. We'll call it a five. It's still a hit. So. Yep, so that's another hit. I think we're just going to take one of the depleted units away because we still want to fire back. And then now we still have, though, the at rear line. Uh, I think we're seven, right? One, two, three, four. Yep, we're still seven. They're looking for six. And <laughs> it just shows you that a terrible leader is uh, just that, a terrible leader. So now we go back to the Prussian side, three or higher. Nope, he misses. Back to that front Austrian line, four, four five, or six. That's one hit. Let's take away a depleted unit. And, and you know, I, you, you would think you know who's going to win this, but I had uh, a battle down here. In, I think it was one of these cities. I forget, but I think it was actually this one, this Olmutz city. This, it, I had one guy, one leader unit that rolled high every single time and just completely pinned up the Russians. All right, so oh, we were the Prussians were going to fire back, so looking for a three or higher misses. So that front line's going to fire on the Austrian side, looking for four, five, or six, and that is three more hits. Going to get rid of three more. Russian units. Yikes. Not looking good. Not looking good. And now the leader unit fires back. <laughs> uh, I need one of those dice towers of shame. All right. And then back to this line of four, looking for four, five, or six. And I think that's one hit. Again, I'm going to get rid of the depleted unit. Lead a unit just so we can keep firing. Back line's gonna fire. Looking for six. Six is the only thing that will hit. There is one hit, so well, I have to get rid of that depleted unit. It will go back over to that lonely, lonely leader unit. It's looking for a three or higher. He misses. Back to the front line. Four, five, or six hits. Two hits, that's enough to kill off that leader. And I think that is probably enough to kill off Berlin. So I move these units back. Berlin. Back to Berlin. Where? So that was all of the points for the Austrian side action points. We, um, well, of course, there was an action point. Also, they're moving and they're battling. So we're at uh, remove recovery markers. There weren't any uh, mark control. Uh, so that does change.
that becomes, Berlin becomes Austrian. Oh no! And then uh, they can certainly draw a tactics card. Let's draw it. Oh, we need it. And then step step eight, which isn't on here, but step eight is check for victory conditions. And so well, we didn't move control markers. So what happened was the Russians lost Berlin. This went down to eight. So whether or not that would have went down or not, it wouldn't matter. Once this alliance marker hits uh, eight and, or nine, if, if you've lost Berlin, that is it. And that is the game. And I, it, I didn't expect this at all. I was looking at approaching the uh, 1759 winter phase. And I was actually considering stopping it there anyway, just because it's taking so darn long to play this game. Um, I, I, I think the play time was um, four to five hours. I don't know. So I'm going to call this game. I'm going to call it for the Austrian Alliance. Just wanted you to see that. I'm going to stop the video here and I will come back with some closing thoughts on the great, on the, what am I trying to say here? The name of the game, the great crisis of Ritter 2. I'm a little shocked right now what just happened. So yeah, I'll come back after this and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, give a little review of the game itself. Okay, so The Great Crisis of Frederick II by VUCA Simulations. Uh, what do I think? I like this game. That's what I think. I don't think and I know it. <laughs> I really like this game. And I think this game, if, if, even if someone is not interested in wargaming, I think they would like this game. I think this would be a great introductory game into wargaming because it is it is a uh, high enough level that you're not too into, you know, the rules are light. This is a rules light game for sure. The rules are not hard to understand. They're easy to understand. I think I think just about anyone would have a good time playing this game, even if they're not a wargamer. But, you know, even if they are, like I said, this would be a great introduction to wargaming strategic level, high level stuff. This is not a tactical game by any stretch of the imagination. So it's a fun, high level strategic game. Uh, the rules, like I said, it is rules light, but I feel that um, the rules, they mesh together really well. I, it, it, a lot of thought went into this game, it seems like. I didn't really find anything that seemed packed on or, you know, just an afterthought. Everything seems to work together really well. It was just things mattered <laughs> in this game. It, you know, a lot of thought. You really had to think about what you were going to do. At least I did. You you had to, there's areas on this board, you've got to pay attention to what's going on. You've got to watch these resource spaces. That's, that's critical. You've got to be aware of, you know, when Russia's going to come in. You've got to watch what France is doing. You've got to be careful if you're Great Britain. In the game I played, or the playthrough, it looked like France was going to come up and just push Great Britain off the board. So you really have to think, really, really makes you think about what your strategy is going to be. So that's really cool. You know, your turn sequence over here, uh, the winter phases were something I thought were kind of neat. Usually in a war game, you get to a winter phase, you're kind of dreading it because it, it, <laughs> that's usually when you get punished. And there is a little bit of that in this game. You, you know, you do have the... Uh, you do have some winter depletion on your uh, your sieging units uh, and things like that, so it's not not all good. But at the same time, you get that winter phase, and it's almost like, oh, I'm finally going to get to bring in some reinforcement <laughs> and have more units to do things with. So I, I really um, I really like that. Action points, I uh, the action points system I loved, and, and the action point system can be brutal at the same time. You roll low on the on the die roll and and you could be screwed. It, it could be painful. You know, there's so much you want to do, and if you get a low die roll, it, and you have very few action points to use, it's frustrating. At the same time, you can get too many. You can have, you know, seven or eight action points sitting on the board, and just, you can't really use them. So I really did like the, the action point system. Uh, you know, you had to think about things like retreat, because if you retreat, you have to pay in advance your action points. So you're kind of, you're kind of cutting into that. And the cards can kind of mitigate that some. You do have so your card decks are kind of divided, not kind of, they are. They're divided into st strategic cards and tactical cards, your battle cards. And so the strategic cards do kind of mitigate some of the bad low dice rolling. I won't say bad dice rolling, I'll just say low dice rolling. But the cards, the cards do help mitigate that some. And like I said, just fantastic game. Replayability, very high. I, this game, with the... Randomness of the dice, the die rolls, you've got a lot of randomness there. 
and, and you have the end of turn shift. So that between those two things alone, high replayability. I think you can get a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of time and fun out of this game. What else? Uh, the components, I think I said in the unboxing, top-notch components. VUCA has outdone themselves with the board, the counters. No need to, to round corners on those counters. They're fine like they are. You can get it right to the table. Just I, VUCA, I was on their website. They have a Pacific game coming out, and I am, I'm going to be all over that. <laughs> I love the Pacific Theater, and this has shown me that uh, that's going to be an insta-buy for me. In fact, there's some other games that if you go to, the, to VUCA's website, they've released some some more upcoming games. So I'm really happy to see them putting more games out there. I think that's going to be a good thing for uh, for everybody. So, okay, negative thoughts, criticisms. Well, every game's going to have them. I guess they're going to have them. And so one thing, and this is this is not built as a solo game, but one thing that could be an issue is the tactics cards that I talked about, the card decks that you get. So you do get the strategy cards, the tactics cards. So if you're playing this solo, that's going to be a hindrance because there really is no method in here to um, to take you to tell you how to handle the tactical cards when you're playing solitaire. And and I actually, as I was playing this, I kind of came up with some thoughts on that. I'll talk about those at the end of this video uh, a little bit. Yeah, I won't go into that right now. Um, other negatives. Uh, one thing that I did during the playthrough was I created this this battle board. I really feel like something like this should have been included with the game. This, this was, you can't really fight the battles on, on, on the map. It's hard to do. So you can't, you have to do it off the map in my opinion. And so they don't give you anything to do that with. So you need space to do that. And something like this was kind of cool because I could just take this battle board and you saw me do it in the playthrough. You know, I've got the attackers on one side, the defenders on the other in a field battle. And then you know, once that field battle is resolved, if the attackers move forward to the fort, then you can have the fort battle. Uh, so I kind of a little disappointed that they didn't include a battle board. The other thing that I wish they would have included was more dice. There's they include four d sixes in this game. I think it really they should have put in eight. There were a lot of times I was rolling eight dice at a time. I think I even hit nine at one point, and I, it, it would have been nice to have eight d6s instead of the four uh you certainly can make do with four and there's you know sometimes you would roll just four or less because you would have you would be limited by the uh commander's tactical rating so but i, I just really wish they had, they would have included some more dice a little frustrating another thing that was frustrating and i'm not really going to knock this is not a negative to the game this is something i probably should have done they do include so when when i when i was playing i was using stacks they do include counters with numbers so that you could actually like if I have a stack of eight in a Leipzig, for instance, I could put just a, a counter that has an eight on it to signify that there was a stack of eight there because I was knocking over stacks constantly. And it, it was that was a nice inclusion. Another positive to this game is they included the option to, you can either play with stacks on the board or you can play with those, um, those numbered counters. So that was kind of nice. Uh, another thing that I kind of thought was and again, maybe not a fault of the game, maybe a fault of me, but it, 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 one thing that was easy to do as the Austrian player was to kind of lose sight or kind of forget about really uh, these three empires, uh, the Holy Roman Empire, Saxony, and Sweden. There were times I, I completely forgot that when it was the Austrian army's turn to go that I, I could do stuff with them too. So that, that was kind of, I wish there were some way a better way to kind of remind you of that fact, but like I said, that's probably just me. The other thing, uh, let's see. So I said I think I've hit all the um, what I would consider negatives to the game. If they're really negative, it's probably maybe just nitpicky. I will say too that if you're if you're a tactical, if you're a fan of tactic tactical level wargaming in this period, this probably isn't for you because this is, you know, you're looking at troops of thousands of men this is very strategic there's not a lot of tactical field battles so you might want to skip it if you're if you're not into the higher level strategic stuff something else that i thought that might need some tweaking and and, and that's the um so when you when you're using the chip pull system and i had my chip cup out using it for the chip the chips the end of turn chip so I, 
I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about the end of turn chip. It, it, it does add randomness to the game, and, and it needs to be in the game. I would not take that out of the game. But the problem with the end of turn chip for me that I noticed, there were times when I would pull that thing back to back. And, and so it, it's, it can be frustrating. You know, you, you come up on a turn, and you have all these things in mind, and the end of turn chip comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you just you've lost a turn and the game progresses. And I've already been thinking I, I love the house rule games and I've already been thinking that that might that might be a house rule thing. I mean, I was thinking one thing you could do is you could say and of course this wouldn't apply to the early turns because once you first start out, you really only have, you know, the Austrian player and the Prussian player going. So it's not as huge a deal, but once you get all those all the other armies, and they come into the game pretty early, but once you get all those other armies into the cup, one thing I thought about doing is when you start a new turn, don't put the end of turn shit in yet. I, you know, maybe house rule it so that you've got to pull three or four times, and then the end of turn shit would go in. So that would, you would at least give you more, it would make the game longer for sure. <laughs> and, and this is a long game. I honestly, it just not, and it's not a negative. But I, I was having fun playing it, but I just, it, you know, I, I had planned to play the entire game on camera, but that just became just a near impossibility with me wanting to do more things. So it, it would make the game longer, but I, you know, I, I think I'd be okay if I were playing this with against another person, maybe even solo. I, I might house rule it where once all the armies are in, you pull four chits. Let them go, and then you throw that into turn shit in there. It's just an option. I, th I think it would definitely make the game a little more interesting. What else? You know, another thing that I that I didn't that frustrated me that I didn't care for was if you watch the, the playthrough at the end. So the, one of the victory conditions is if you know you lose Berlin and your uh, resource counter is at eight or nine as the Prussians. That's a sudden death end. So kind of surprised me the end of the game where the Austrian alliance took Berlin. And I was at, I think I was at eight, maybe I was at nine. It didn't matter because they took Berlin. And the thing that frustrated me was there was nothing that I could do because the uh, victory check and it's not on the rule book because it's in the updated the errata sheet. There is a step eight here so that when the phasing player gets to the end here, the last thing to do eight is check for victory. So once Berlin fell, there was absolutely nothing that the Prussian alliance could do. There wasn't one last turn. There wasn't anything. It was just game over. It felt kind of gamey to me. Maybe not. I mean, Berlin did fall. It, <laughs> but I, I, it just seems like I kind of felt like, you know, give Prussia, the Prussian alliance, one more turn. Maybe they don't deserve another turn because they lost Berlin, but I don't know. I'm not sure how I felt about that. It, it just seemed that Prussia should have had one last chance to get Berlin back or, or maybe get that resource token, that resource chip back up a little bit to try, try to keep alive. Maybe that's another house rule. I don't know, but maybe, and maybe that's the way the designer intended it. You know, you lose Berlin. Your resources are, are way down at eight or nine and game over. So there's that. And what else? I, I, I think that's about it. I had a really good time playing this game. And I one of the marks of a good uh, board game for me, a war game, is, you know, when you're done playing it, you want to play it again. And I really want to play this one again. <laughs> it's, it's that much fun. And I'm actually going to try to, um, let's see if I taught my wife into playing this. I think she would like it. Because like I said, if you're not a war gamer, I still think you'd have fun with this. Because you have so much going on. It's not, you know, it's it's high enough level that if you play something like, I, I want to say Risk, but this is nothing like Risk. But I, I just think anybody would have fun with this. So highly recommend it if you don't have it. I highly recommend you get this. It, it solos well. I think this is a fine solo game. That that said, I, I, I did say that I wanted to talk a second about a tactics card. Let me grab a pack here. A deck, I should say. Tactics cards. Because I, I kind of made some notes and I'm going to grab those. So, one thought I had with these um, cards, and I, I when I played it, it was just, I, I went by the rules and just played, you know, each side best I could, which 
which worked. It's a little tricky when you get to countering cards when you do it that way, but it does work, and I don't think it's the best solution. So one thing I thought of, these cards come, there's two flavors, you know, this is the Prussian deck, and so there's two flavors. You'll get what I call the tactics cards, and these are the ones you would use in battle, and of course it has the leader's tactical rating that, that you need to, to play this card, and then you have the strategic cards, which are the, you know, you get to add more action points, just the higher level gain thing. So these are ones you would play during winter turns, um, maybe before your opponent marches, so these are the strategic cards. And so the idea I had, and I'm gonna I'm gonna think about this some more. Maybe I'll maybe I'll develop a system around this and post it on Board Game Geek. One of the thoughts I had is, well, the first thing you could do, the first thought I had was honestly, was just take the tactic, if you're playing solo, take the tactics and take the entire decks of cards out of the game. Don't have any cards. Just and, and what you would have to do if you did that, if you took these cards out of the game, you would have to do one other thing, and that's when you have a retreat, do not charge an action point for that. In other words, don't penalize a player for having to retreat from battle. And I say that because the retreats from battle are so tied into the action points and the cards that you couldn't, you could not, you know, go into the negative by retreating without having these cards. So... I would say, you know, if you wanted to play without the cards entirely, charge nothing to retreat action point wise, and it would work. I think it would work fine. I think you'd still have a fun game. Not as much fun as you'd have if you had the tactic card. It still would be a fun game, though. So my idea, though, separate them into their, their strategics and their tactical sides. And, and both powers, the Austrian Alliance, they have the same amount of cards as the, the Prussian Alliance, so that's not going to be a huge deal. And so my thought would be is to take the strategic level cards and limit each side's hand to three. And I, like I said, I haven't tested this. I, this is just my them kicking around. But so you would give each side, you would limit their hand to three. You'd still play through. You'd still use the rules as they are in the game. So, you know, you come to periods where you have to reshuffle you use your card, you would set it aside, you would reshuffle your strategic cards wherever they would call for that. But you would the maximum hand size for either side is going to be three. So you, you wouldn't have this checking for how many resource points you own and all that stuff. So that's the thought for the for the for the strategic cards. I don't think that's too difficult to do. It may need a little tweaking on what your hand size would be. I, I don't think I'm trying to think. There was no. I don't think so. I think you you may have to tweak the actual hand size. I think three is a good number. I was kind of thinking about it. Other than that, you would play these cards just as per rules, um, except for that. All right. So for the tactical cards, this is the way the tactical cards would work. So you know when you start the game, very beginning of the game, you would of course have your tactical decks shuffled, and remember the tactical decks are the ones with the. Uh, the yellow number in the upper left-hand corner, the tactical rating of your leader. Both of the tactical decks would be shuffled and face down. So as a solitaire player, you have no idea what's, what's on top of that. So you go to battle. The battle occurs. And you have all of your units on the battle cards or where they're, they're fighting. But let's just say you have a, a Prussian leader. And of course, you could have multiple leaders, but as per rules, you always look at your strongest leader for these tactical cards. So what you would do is when you go to the field of battle, you would look at your leader rating. So here, the Prussian leader is rated, his tactical rating is three. Well, what you would do, you would roll a d4. And if you roll his rating or less, you could pull a tactics card. In this case, I rolled a four. I'll roll again. I rolled a three. So in that case, it's equal to his tactical or lower, and that's what you're looking for. So if it's equal or lower to their to their tactical rating, you would pull a card. So they would get the, as the Prussians, they would get to pull a card. You'd also, again, I think you would also have to look at the tactical rating here. So he happens to be a three, and he got a three, so he's okay. He can actually play this now in this battle. The Austrian leader, the Austrian player, has to do the same thing. So he has to roll his tactical rating or less to be able to even draw a card. So his is two. So he would roll. 
He got a three, so he wouldn't even get a tactic score. So that would be brutal for them. That would hurt. But I, it, to me, it makes it more fun because it kind of, you know, it's just another step of canceling out cards. or, And it also, as a solitaire player, kind of, you have no idea what's coming out. But say he did, say he rolled a one. And the other thing I like about this method is, you know, rolling the d4, it makes having a, a, t a leader with a higher tactical rating that much de more desirable to get into battle. But let's say the Austrian player rolled a, a one, and he was able to draw a tactics card. Pulls one, and one. So he would actually get to use his card too, because as per the game rules, it's his tactical rating's a two, he can use the one. And so you, you, you fight your battle. You only have two tactics cards. You're not going to have a hand to pull from. But again, I don't think that's a huge deal as a solitaire player, because you're, you're not going to know, you know, anyway, what's coming up. There's no way to game this. So, and and there's your cards. I, I think that's, the only thing is you got you have to have a D4 to do this. <laughs> so, I think that's the only thing. And then, when you're done, there's two schools of thought here, and I don't really know which one I prefer yet, but one option is to, when you fight the battle, when you're done with these cards, you could just set these aside and draw from this these decks four times. So you would draw four cards, then you would reshuffle and then start over. The other option would be, and this would make it more random, is after every battle where you use tactical cards, reshuffle the decks. A lot of reshuffling, but I think it would be, I think it would make it a lot more interesting and a lot more fun. So anyway, that's my thought on the cards as a solitaire player. Uh, and I haven't, you know, feel free to to offer uh, criticisms or suggestions because I haven't really put much thought into that. That just kind of came to me as I was playing, and I'm always looking for ways to, to come up with a solitaire system. Um, there's Stuka Joe's solitaire, his card-driven method. I, I don't know if it would work with, with these cards. It might. I don't, don't know why it wouldn't. And so that might be worth looking at. And I have pre-ordered Stuka Joe's solitaire card system on, uh, I think it's GMT. Is that who's putting that out? But anyway, I have pre-ordered it, so I, I will have that coming, and we will talk about it when I get it. I think Stuka Joe did a, a good job of, of developing that system. But yeah, I think so. I think what I just outlined here for the tactical cards, the strategic cards, I think it would work. And it's another reason why I really want to get back to this game and try it again. I want to play another game. But I'm not going to. Uh, we've looked at this one long enough, I think. So I'm going to end it here. And I hope you've enjoyed the playthrough. I highly recommend this game. Highly recommend it. If you if you like the higher level strategic games, it's fun, high replayability, and of course you it's it's easy enough to play solitaire if you want to. So that's it. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned. I don't know what's going to get to the table next. I've got so much to choose from. If you, if you have any, if you've watched some of my unboxings, you want to make some suggestions, feel free to do so below, and I'll take those into consideration. But. We'll see. We'll see what's coming up. And I look forward to seeing you back next time.